All right, welcome to this lesson, and this lesson is all about finding your book topic. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to cover keyword research, keyword and niche, niche research, rather. We'll talk about what exactly they are, how they differ, and uh, really break that down, as that's going to be the basics, the, the basis of what we're going to be covering over the next few lessons. How many topics are there? How many potential book topics is there? Um, this is really important so you understand what topics you want to get into so you're not worried about being saturated um, in the marketplace or anything like that. So we're really going to uh, de demyth, debunk some ideas around that. We're going to do some live keyword research and um, I'm going to show you what the, the, the tracking sheet, the profitability sheet is um, and uh, how to use that to help find the topic that your book is going to be about. Now, this lesson goes in part, this is kind of like lesson one of the keyword research type of lessons. It's going to be followed by lesson two, which you'll watch in a little bit. Um, so just keep that in mind. Not all of your questions might be answered in this as they might be answered in the following lesson, but this is designed to really break it down to make this part of the process as simple as possible for you. So keyword research, what is it and what it is not? A niche is a marketer category. Uh, then we break it down into a sub niche. It's a segment of a larger niche. And then finally we have our topic or our keyword. Uh, what is your actual, what, what your book is actually about? The, I want to point out the, the word topic and keyword go hand in hand. Uh, keyword research is really topic research. Um, the book that you're going to be writing is going to be about a certain topic. And that is what your, your customers are essentially searching, which is essentially the keyword. So I just want you to understand that language as we continue here. Now on Amazon, there's 20 nonfiction categories. And uh, you find those by going to the uh, nonfiction ebook K Kindle store. And uh, you can see them highlighted in red here. Arts, and I, I won't read all of them, but you can see them all there. Those are the main 20 nonfiction categories. Um, now, in there, there are over 200 sub niches or categories for you to choose from, for you to gain ideas from. And what we're going to be doing is using this um, as a way to help generate ideas for your books. So finding your topic. So let's say you want to have a book in the health and fitness niche. For whatever reason, that's your interest. That's what you really get excited about, um, you know, building the business around. And that's what you want to do. Great. So you can't just have a book on health and fitness. So we have to break it down, niche it down into one of the sub niches. So on Amazon, it would go from health and fitness and dieting. That's the name of the niche as one of the 20. And then you click on that and it would open up addiction, recovery, addiction and recovery, beauty, grooming and style, alternative medicines, and it would list some more. Okay. So this is now a sub niche within the health and fitness and dieting niche. From there, if we clicked on alternative medicines, we're going to see topics, Acu acupuncture, alternative therapies, aromatherapy, energy healing. These are now specific topics within alternative med medicines within the health and fitness niche. But breaking it down even further into alternative therapies, there's red light, thyroid healing, and apple cider vinegar. So you might have a book on red light alternative therapies or rather alternative therapies and focus on a book on red light, thyroid healing, apple cider vinegar, whatever that one would be. But your book is in the niche of health and fitness. So that's how we're going to break it down. Now, I'll give you another example here. Crafts, hobbies, and home. That's the niche. Animal care and pets. That's the sub niche and the topic. Boom dogs, right? Now you would never want to have a book just about dogs in general. The reason being it's too broad. You need to be specific. What is, what, what are your customers actually targeting, right? For example, they're never going to be targeting just dogs, right? That that's just too broad. So they might be 
going out after something like puppy training. Puppy training, it's been a super popular niche for, for self-publishers. But most people do it the wrong way because they create, what, a puppy training book. Horrible idea to do a book on, especially now. So what you want to do is whatever topics you want to do, you want to see and look and think to yourself, how can I take this topic and tackle it from different angles? So for example, the easy, easy way of thinking is with puppy training, make it niche or make it dog specific, breed specific puppy training for Labradors. So now you have a very specific dog that you're going after or tackling in a different way. I don't know if there's puppy training books for kids or, you know, puppy training with kids, right? Like you want to say you have young children and you want to get a puppy. How, how do you train it with young children around? You make a book specifically targeting parents with that problem. The more specific your book can be, it's going to do two things for you. One, it allows you to target a specific customer, identify them. So when parents are, you know, they're, they're like, oh, we want to get a puppy, oh, but we got young kids, right? They're thinking about those, that problem going through their head as they're going through Amazon, right? Looking at all the puppy training books. Then all of a sudden puppy training with young kids, how to train your puppy with young kids. Boom, that book, it stands out to them. It calls them because it's specifically made for them and their problem, right? You don't need every one who wants to train their puppies to buy your book. You only need 1% of that market to buy your book because that 1% is a six figure of your business. And so not only do you attract a specific customer faster, but you can charge more for this book. A puppy training book, you know, let's say for the ebook might go for $2.99 on Amazon. A puppy training for kid might sell for $6.99. Why? Because now you have a more specific book with more specific information that, you know, in all hindsight, takes more time to research, takes more time to put together and all, all of that because it's more specific. It's not generalized. This is a very common thing in marketing. The more specific the information, the higher price you can charge for it. So why publish in the same niche, right? One of the reasons we focus and publish in the same general niche, going back to like crafts, cabbies, and home, in this case, it'd be animal care and pets, right? So why are we focusing on the, you know, the pets niche, so to speak? Well, we want to do a couple things. Number one, we want to create more authority for ourselves. By coming out with book after book after book on the same topic in the same niche, it creates more authority for your pen name, creates more authority for your books, right? It builds at the same time, it builds more credibility for you, right? Because you are now essentially becoming the expert, quote unquote. You create raving fans. Right. When you create great books time and time again, your customers start acknowledging that and you will have people lining up to buy your next book to 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 leave reviews. You get repeat buyers, which is always key and books will sell other books. I'm going to show you. So this is um, self publisher who's in the make money online niche. Right. Doing good. And you see, she's focused on the make money online customer. So she creates this, these books, you know, going with the pink, the, 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 the pink background, pink cover. Amazon creates these, or you can have your books go into a series. One, two, three, four, five. This is a series. What do customers do? They buy book one, then book two, book three, book four, book five. Amazon also promotes it that way to them as well. And then customers who also bought right? All of your books. You don't want other competitors books here. You want Amazon telling future customers, Hey, customer who bought this book, they also bought all of these books by the same author because people will just pick up all of these books. So this is one reason you want to make sure you're focusing on the same type of customer in, in a niche. Okay. So what should my book be about? Well, there's four different things we want to take a look at. Where are you currently in this business? You might be coming into the course with 
um, a couple books already published um, in a specific niche it's doing well and you might be looking just to continue building on that well then you you really already know what your books are going to be about um, whereas some of you might be looking to one make money that's probably everybody but then some of you are looking to generate um, you know for lead generation to sell additional products or to build more credibility for yourself if you already have another business and you're looking at getting a book written um, to help build your image um, that's something else you need to be looking at right so your book would be based on whatever your industry is or your expertise is. personal interests um, that's a big one, and I'm going to show you how to take your personal interests, turn them into books, and make them profitable. And um, profitability, of course. We only really want to be publishing books on topics that are going to be proved profitable, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use a topic tracking sheet to come up with ideas you're interested in, you're passionate or excited about, hobbies that you have or things that you've been curious and would like to learn more. So this is just a brain dump, essentially. We're just going to take the sheet, I'll show you in a second. We're gonna take the sheet and we're just gonna come up with like 10 different ideas of things that you either are interested in, passionate about, excited about, hobbies or things that you are more curious about. So you can watch me do this. Okay, so here's the top of track. So all we're going to do is we're going to list down 10 ideas or 10 topics that fit what I just said. So one of the topics I'm interested in is gardening. So gardening. So I'm just going to write it down. Uh, another one is now I, for gardening. I don't know anything about it. Um, we'd like to, do, we'd like to do some more gardening um, come this summer, but uh, we've never really had, had it. But so I have, zero expertise or knowledge about this topic but it is something i want to learn about uh, scuba diving i scuba dive i'm not an expert by any means but it is a hobby that i have uh, musical instruments i don't play any my daughter plays and my son plays um but that you know it's something i'm interested in curious about learning more about but weight training now here as I'm writing this down and I'm obviously doing this not live with you guys but I'm not going to edit out this talking part now as soon as I thought of weight training in my head before I typed it down here I was like oh there's no nah, you you don't want books on weight training you would want videos so I doubted myself right there but why is that so crucial not to do because don't doubt yourself with any any freaking proof there's zero evidence to to support that doubt that came in my mind so i'm going to put it down anyways and we're going to do the research to determine whether or not that's a feasible topic but don't let yourself talk yourself out of an idea because we don't know until we actually do the research and that is just so key um okay so gardening scuba diving musical instruments weight training health nutrition nutrition so i know this is kind of under the same top or same categories so that's why i just put it underneath you can do that if you think of similar things um Okay. We'll just leave it at four for right now, but you you understand that the premise of just brain dumping ideas and things that you're interested in um, You know that may or may not work. We don't know yet We're gonna have to put it to the test that I'm gonna show you to determine whether or not any of these are valuable or uh, viable options and um, I'm gonna show you how to keep building on this list as we actually go to Amazon and uh, come up with more ideas Okay, so now that you have put down some of your ideas, your topics, potential topics, onto the Topic Tracker spreadsheet, we're going to go to Amazon and we're going to start coming up with some more ideas here. Now, our best resource by far is Amazon's Kindle Best Seller List. This is the top selling books on Amazon. They're proven topics that they're already in demand and they're already selling. This 
doesn't get any easier than looking at the best sellers list because if we want to find okay what are the hottest selling topics on amazon this list literally tells you the hottest selling most in-demand book topics there is on amazon right now um so we start here we're going to branch out if we if you if we need to you will not need any other resource than the amazon's best sellers list um now to get to the best sellers list i'll put a link in the, in the description of this video you just click it it'll go there but i just google amazon kindle's best sellers list here i'll do that right now for you so you can take a look um so amazon kindle best sellers list okay and then you just click on um kindle ebooks and boom there you are the best selling actually no we're gonna head on nonfiction first now we got the 20 top nonfiction best selling books on amazon there's top 100 free or paid top 100 free um and we can go into categories from here okay now uh, where to start so personal interests hobbies sports activities uh basically the things that you already wrote down on the tracking sheet um niches you have knowledge in right whether it's related to your work or your profession school might be related to school your kids your family things that are going on in your life that you are just getting really good at you know for for new parents for example new parents you're probably obsessed right now with helping your child get to sleep uh so you can get back you know um you know some nights so that is usually a hot topic for people to start talking about because they ha it's going on in their in their life right now and i've seen lots of students you know create a pro profitable books around that type of topic using those type of ideas now, high demand niches are things like self-help, business and money, health and fitness, science and computers and technology. These have the most demand out of any other niche on Amazon. So if your interest in what you have knowledge on in lines in one of these five categories, fantastic. Um, you, you're definitely gonna have a topic you can make some decent cash with. Okay, so how do we find your niche? Well this is called the hedgehog concept uh jim collins talks about this in his book and um basically there's three things we're going to look at your interests and hobbies your passions what you love what your passions are or what your hobbies are what would you teach if you could just just so more people could enjoy it so to speak right like the things that really like you know the things that make your heart smile so those are your passions okay then we want to find your expertise what do you know more about than the average person you don't have to be an actual expert on the topic but what do you just know right what are those things you just know about um and then market demand are people buying this okay so expertise think about topics you know better than anyone else stuff you you, you know because talk about it with your friends all the time um people come to you for advice now these this can also be things you want to learn more about um my gardening example i am not an expert i don't know a ton about gardening but when i start reading about gardening stuff like i absorb all that information that I, because i want to become an expert quote unquote um you know not so much that i can teach gardening but you want to be able to absorb all the knowledge you can about it so you don't have to be the expert but you know you want to learn about it and uh, you do have a high level of interest in it your passions things that make you smile hobbies you love doing or spending time on um, you do these even when no one else wants to um, this is definitely your competitive advantage um, this was one of the reasons that my ga my gaming guides did so well and nobody else could compete with me because i was just generally i'm a genuine retro gamer um, you know i love spending time on the n64 super nintendos uh, so I could create books that I knew were going to be uh, a hit because I was creating them for, for myself, for the exact market. Um, and it was a passion of mine. So I, like I was very meticulous about things because I cared so much about it. When you care about things, you just do a better job and you benefit long term because of these results or because of the effort you put in.
So what are you passionate about? And then your market demand. Are books already selling? And at what volume are they selling? This is key. Now, market demand does not, if there's no market demand, it does not mean it's a, your idea is dead in the water. It does not mean that because there is always going to be, um, there's always going to be that case where, you know, you, you have an exp expertise on it and you're passionate about it. But for whatever reason, there doesn't seem to be a ton of movement on, on Amazon. And one reason could be that you're going to be the first to the market for this. And that's okay. And when we go through in the next lesson, when we go through um, and we put these ideas to the test, you're going to see exactly what I mean by this. So you can actually determine, hey, did I just stumble across, did I stumble across a new market where there is, there might not be any books that are selling yet, but you know, it's something that's about to, about to hit Amazon. And we're going to talk about that because, um, you know, I've seen publishers do that. They're the first to, first to a specific market. And now they're cemented in that market forever because they were the first to it. Um, but if you looked at it just by the numbers saying, hey, well, this doesn't look profitable because there's no books really selling on this sp specific topic yet. So many people would just, you know, shove it away. But they were an expert and they had their passions about it. And so they just ended up helping boost that market. Hopefully that part makes sense. That's going to make more sense in the next lesson though. Okay. So what we need to do um, before we start is one, we have to install Amazon DS quick view. So if you, uh, you want to be using Google, um, Google Chrome for this, uh, if you're not using Google Chrome, just you, you need to be on Google Chrome because that's where all the extensions that we're going to be using and, and everything is going to be. So just, um, Amazon DS quick view, Google it. It's a Chrome extension. And so it's just going to sit right up here. So I already have it. So yours is going to be like install or download or something like that. And then, um, uh, you cannot add extensions in incognito. So you're going to have, you know, don't use incognito mode right now. Uh, we're going to use incognito mode though, when we search on Amazon and then, so Amazon quick view, just go ahead, follow the, ins the install instructions and then turn it on. What that's going to do is this little Chrome extension and it's free is it's going to give us information that we want without having to look at the, see this, it's loading up right here, loading the rank. So this book is 2420 in the Kindle store. So it's giving us the sales rank for these books without having to click on the actual book and just do all the extra work. So that's what this Amazon quick view is for. Okay. So the BSR, you're going to hear that terminology a lot. Amazon bestseller rank. It's this number down here, what I just showed you on the other screen. Every book or every product on Amazon has a BSR from one being the best selling product or the best selling book um, on Amazon to, I don't know how many millions, um, whatever the case is. So the lower the number, you know, your best selling book. Remember hearing a podcast. Let's actually see. Um, the best-selling book on Amazon, he hit number one, and he was doing something like $10,000 a day. Um, Steve Scott, it was on one of Steve Scott's podcasts. I can't remember if it was Steve Scott himself or somebody he was interviewing, um, but it was really, really cool. So, yeah. Anyways, so once you have that installed, now um, there are a couple categories or niches that you don't really want to focus on. Medical ebooks. History, law, biographies, memoirs, literary, criticism, and theory. Um, look, those are just books and topics are just are much harder to do well in. So unless you're an expert in those or like you have some bizarre interest, it's not bizarre interest, but you have a, like a big interest in it, um, I would avoid all of those topics or niches. So we're also going to avoid books that have a BSR above 200,000. 
they're not worth noting. Um, so we're not going to put down those those topics. Um, so let's dive into it and let's do some live keyword research. And that's what we're going to do right now. All right, so let's go into this. So on my tracking sheet, gardening is my first topic. Um, so we're going to start with that. So that gardening, right? You see it's under crafts, crabbies, crafts hobbies, and home gardening and uh, horticulture. So what I'll do, I'm just going to click on that and take a look at um, some of these books to help generate the idea. I'm going to make this a little smaller to generate the idea um, or generate more ideas rather that I can write underneath the gardening uh, gardening columns. So um, now keep in mind, so as you niche down, the BSRs are typically going to go up, um, right? So if I was just in cross copies in home, right? Now I'm going to have a lot of books that have nothing to do with gardening here, but I am going to have some gardening books in here. Um, based on, the pro so this one, right? I think I saw raised bed gardening for beginners. Um, you know, it's doing 9100 in the Kindle store. So let's see um, with the publishing calculator. So 9100 ebook sales. So it's doing 28 sales a day. So that book is solid. And that's just ebook sales. Um, so, but let's. Keep it simple because right now I want to generate some ideas. We're going to ignore the books that have nothing to do with the topic. So I'm not really doing survival food, so I can ignore that one. And let's see what other ideas I can generate here. Herbal, earthy, medicinal herbs. No. Okay, so raised raise bed gardening. So that's one I'm going to write down. It's raised bed, marijuana, instant pot. Cocktail cookbook. And you see, like, you see what they're doing here? We're in gardening and horticulture. Yeah, some people have put in books on air fryers. Now, these are horrible, horrible um, publishers because what they're doing is they're just manipulating Amazon's category system in order to get... The bestseller rank. See, it's best. It's number one in gardening, horticulture, lawns. But it has nothing to do with that topic. But it gets the book gets if we click on it, number one released. So it's just it's one of those spammy type of things that you don't want to be doing. And if you didn't really understand what I was talking about, don't worry about it. It's relevant. We don't use those type of tactics. Okay, vegetable gardening. Here's another one. Right, BSR of twenty three thousand. Medicinal herbs, second nature, gardener's education. And then you can open up these in new tabs to see more about them to see if they are going to kind of fit. Square foot gardening. Now, I wonder if that might actually be a trademark. So as we go through this, before you jump start an idea you're going to run a trademark search it's simple it's free but the last thing you want to be doing is doing some sort of uh trademark uh, infringement on a book like what i'm thinking square foot gardening might be a trademark but we can run a test to find out see might just be smart branding square foot gardening with kids this person knows what they're doing Okay. Container and raised beds. So I have raised beds. I don't have container. Vertical. And so what I'm doing, right, once again, I'm just coming up with a whole bunch of additional ideas around the gardening topic. So these could be based on, you know, and these are all profitable topics, um, right, 38,000 in the Kindle store. These could all just be different book ideas that I could be doing. Um, once we run through in the next lesson, we're going to run through and put them towards to the test. Um, let's do scuba diving. So 
I'm guessing it's probably going to be under sports. Water sports. Scuba diving fundamentals. Here we are. But see, okay, look at the best sell rank, 171. So this is probably not going to be a, a smart topic. And just to scuba diving, I'm going to see if anything really comes up. Million, 171, million. Yeah, see? So scuba diving is, is a no-go. Just delete that. Okay, let's go back to the best sellers list. Nonfiction, Kindle ebooks, and then nonfiction. And let's go to uh, music. So that's going to be under arts, under music. And a whole bunch of fiction books, so we're going to niche down a little further. Instruments. All right, here we go. So I'm thinking string, uh, since my daughter does violin. Guitar, 28,000. Piano seems to be a very popular one. Piano and guitar. Cello. Ukulele, guitar. Smart. I wonder if there's a copyright issue on that though. Strings. Okay, so here's violinists. So Disney songs. I'm just gonna ignore that because that has to do with Disney. Advance. So if we take a look, so the violin ones, yeah, it's 150. So even a book that's doing like 150, 4,000, so 154,000, it's still one sale a day. And, um, you know, to me, that's still one sale a day. You can build on that, especially if we look at like, you know, horrible cover in my opinion. They've obviously been doing well. Um, you know, with the Suzuki, yeah, that's a type of method. So that method might have a copyright on it in terms of doing books. That's something we'd have to figure out as we do the research. But tackling that from a different angle is fair game. How to play the violin. And let's see, we're at 225. It's like not the nicest cover. Violin for beginners. 229. So like, because we're still pretty close to the 200, I'd look into this, take a closer look at some of these books to determine. It's like, this goes back to this, right? So the market demand, there are books that are selling. They're not doing fantastic, but they're, 
you know, they're not doing fantastic. They're not doing great by any means. But then taking a look at them, is it, are they not doing good because they're not being marketed properly because the covers are not that great? Um, are they running ads to them? Have they, how old are they? You know, have they been updated? Is that one of the reasons, right? And, um, you know, if somebody came in here with a fresh new violin book, could that possibly be, uh, would, would that do a lot better than these ones? So that's taking a look at all the different factors here where your expertise and your passions would recreate the market demand f uh, for these. If there is still demand, yet it's just not being met or served by the current books. So I hope that makes sense uh, when you are looking at these. Um, let's do another keyword though, um, the weight training. Because let's take a look at that. Okay, so weight training is going to be under health, fitness, exercise and fitness, uh, weight training. Okay, so look at this, right? Strength training after 40. Genius. So smart. And, f you know, 5,000 in the Kindle store. 50 sales a day. Just way to go for targeting a, a, a completely different demographic, right? You don't have to compete with the big, and this is definitely, like, who is this? Let's take a look who this person is. Yeah, definitely a self-publisher because these, these are the descriptions that I teach how to write. 100% is a self-publisher. Self Somebody in the course. Sorry if this is your book, but you're doing a great job. Like, this is fantastic. Uh -huh. Yeah, no, whoa, this is great. This is strength training. Barbell training. Mm -hmm. What else? Kettlebell. Great. Recovering. Taking it at a different angle, covering. Hit. Okay, so that gives us it. Okay, now, see, look at this, because this is a perfect example. I self-doubted myself, weight training. Oh, there's, you know, people probably want videos or whatever because that's how I'm, I'm consuming all of my info right now with weight training. So I was gonna write that off, not even put it down, but boom, turns out to be a super profitable niche with all of these ideas here. Um, so thank God I did not listen to myself and I looked at the data first and um, well, now we're gonna take a look at the data closer to determine if it is um, as good as we think it is and it could be a viable niche to start in.